we don't really have a lot of time today so I'm just gonna very quickly uh, do the tutorial as I promised we're gonna we're gonna do this uh, turquoise cup from primary colors let's go so let's just draw it um, and I'm just well I didn't capture the video of me drawing it but I think it's okay you should be able to do it uh, relatively easily you can follow this if you like or pause the video and then you can uh, follow the uh, lines or make it up so the first thing is I decided to just keep the background really simple uh, since I have the primary color set uh, for this you know um, tutorial it's just going to be very simple I'm gonna use uh, new gamboge um, and then you know a bit of red dash into it and just you know put on a bit of an orangey yellow sort of background so for me um, I'm just gonna keep it really really simple you you will see that I'm not really making um, you know anything realistic per se but there's one thing that I try to observe and that is the line if you notice on the table you will find the uh, the wood markings basically and the lines that I'm making has the angles directly uh, you know that I lay on 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 the sketchbook more or less uh, the same angle as I see uh, sort of the lines of um, the wood uh, and in the same direction and in the same angle that's the only thing I'm thinking about because when you do that there's a sense of depth depth uh, or space in your sketch if you were to just draw parallel lines it will not give you any uh, sense of dimension or space in your sketch at all so even though I'm just simply making some you know orangey marks on a sketchbook I do try to observe the space or the lines behind it previous tutorial I've already uh, you know basically show you how to mix turquoise uh, it's basically phthalo blue uh, with a dash of new gamboge and a very small dash of red you know, whichever red you have I, it doesn't really matter um, and so what I do is I di dilute down that color and I'm trying to put down uh, all the shapes that I see that are like turquoise all right you're gonna see me basically laying down light turquoise across all the the little shapes uh, big or small uh, that I see that are basically you know where the light hits the cup and the saucer so uh, no magic basically light turquoise um, you know I, I didn't use white uh, opaque white for this sketch although that uh, could have been uh, an option um, you can see that you could actually go lighter on the turquoise and one of the ways uh, to do that would be to put in a transparent white like a Chinese white or uh, you know zinc white um, and that would lighten it but the only problem with that is that it makes it slightly more opaque and therefore uh, you know it becomes a little bit easier to get muddy color uh, with that combination now the original six colors that you get from the Daniel Smith um, you know collection uh, is a fantastic transparent set so uh, it makes you know your sketches beautiful by just staying transparent throughout uh, from beginning to the end without having to introduce any opaque colors to it so we're almost done with all the light turquoise colors and uh, we're just kind of checking and maybe just putting a few more depths and I think that's about it now we're gonna go in and mix the uh, dark turquoise uh, you would have seen the other tutorial I'll put a link right here uh, just in case you don't have it uh, or have not seen it well it's basically uh, if you think about the the complementary of blue that would be orange if you think about the complementary of green that would be red so to get a darker version of turquoise you basic, basically put in a bit of uh, orange and a bit of uh, red into it uh, because primarily uh, the turquoise color is a base of blue with a, uh, a big dash of green and a small depth of red in it um, so you know if you put orange and red into uh, the mix it will become darker so uh, in fact that's the lesson that we are trying to get to which is to get the complementary of the color to mix it and to get the kind of uh, you know uh, where your eye sees uh, the color as a shadowed version of the first color um, and, and turquoise is a very difficult color to mix shadow for but it is a good exercise nevertheless and uh, that's what we're trying to do more complicated 
uh, <laughs> uh, I really shouldn't have picked this for a beginner tutorial, but actually I kind of tag it as level two. Um, in the description, you'll see that I normally would have tagged as level one for complete beginner, level two for a little bit more advanced. Um, you know, maybe you've been painting for about or sketching for about six months or so. Anyway, um, if you look at the darker color, your eyes will immediately see that um, the light versus shadow version of turquoise is beginning to pop. And that's what really is the intention of studying colors. Uh, every color has a shadow version of itself. And the best way to do it is to um, you know, add a dash of complementary color uh, that uh, uh, you know, if you are using blue, that will be adding a bit of orange. If you are using purple, that will be using, uh, putting in a bit of yellow. If you are doing red, a bit of green, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, if you are not familiar with this concept, please go back and watch my other tutorials, uh, two videos back, and you will find that I talk a little bit more about the concept and the theory behind it. Uh, some of the theory is actually very important because if you think about the uh, and a good understanding of color, you are not phased when you are looking at the color and you are wondering how do I mix the color. And a lot of the time, one of the biggest problem that you need to uh, solve in uh, in sketching outdoor or even just sketching and looking at a particular color is to know what color to put down when you are putting uh, the color in shadow, right? So in shade, and by knowing that. The simplest way to do it is to get uh, the complementary color into the base color. You have a theoretical basis to work on it. Uh, it's not complicated. It's actually very, very easy. Uh, and I really don't know how to um, make it any simpler than that. Now, if someone, uh, you know, who, are, who is probably a better teacher than I am, uh, have a suggestion, I'll be very happy to hear how you, you know, can teach this concept to your student. Please put it down in the description and we can all learn together as a community. Look correct, uh, it looks a little bit too dark, but remember watercolor uh, dries lighter by about 20-30%. So when it is right, well, while it is wet, it is wrong. <laughs> um, so basically, you know, if it looks right when it, while it's still wet, your watercolor is wrong. Um, so you do need to go a bit more aggressive, a bit more darker uh, when it's wet so that when it dries, it will lighten up and it will be a little bit more correct. Um, it's a bit of hit and miss for me, even, you know, sketching for so many years. Uh, so I would say don't be phased by it. Just go with a bit of a gut feel. Uh, you know, 20%, 20-30% is not measurable by any, you know, means. Just go with the guts if you like. Um, and if you saw my other video about how cooking and painting has so much similarity, that's precisely it. Uh, the fish that you get from the market is not always going to be the same. Tenderness, shape, size, and so on and so forth. So your recipe may call for a certain temperature or certain approach. You have kind of have to adjust to uh, what you get. So in the same way, the colors is the same thing. You do have to have a feel for it. But of course, it's not as hard as uh, you know uh, as what most people would think. With a bit of practice, you can always kind of get a good feel for how much um, value that is darker while it's wet and so on and so forth. But in any case, there's always chance to correct it as well. So don't don't fret. Here as well as uh, sketching the coffee bit of the you know the sketch. Um, I'm actually very lazy. I mean, the, the way to do um, the coffee froth, uh, there's a bit more work. You could use a little small um, brush or some kind of a marker and squiggle over it. And, um, you know, while it's wet, that is. And, and you could drop a lot more colors. Typically, if I'm not using the Daniel Smith 6, you know, color basic uh, primary, I would have uh, used different sort of brown and to give it a bit more mature sort of mixture of the brown. Here I'm just being very lazy, I'm just throwing in all kinds of rainbow colors into it. <laughs> I'm actually having fun but uh, you know it's uh, not very really representative of the coffee that I see uh, with my eyes. <laughs> Doesn't matter, I was trying to create a bit of a fun sketch uh, in that sense. The key is the turquoise mixed of shadow and of uh, the 
uh, turquoise light color. Now you can see that while I'm going to the second layer of the shadows, I'm going a bit more darker. Same combination, a bit more green and a dash of red in it. Um, and it gets you a little bit more of the sort of, uh, uh, you know, with a bit of holes you can see uh, that I leave between the first layer of dark and the second, second layer of dark. And then even the second layer of uh, on the light turquoise, I, you know, I put in, uh, you know, interesting shapes and so on. Um, I, I'm basically sketching what I see. Uh, the little dots here and there on the uh, photo itself, I try to mimic as much as I can. Now I'm going in with the darts uh, on the spoon and I see a lot of very interesting shape, uh, a lot of reflection, highlights and so on. Uh, I'm just going to go over it as best I can, the eyes, the way I, my eye sees it, and I'm just going to lay it down. Uh, you know, don't fret if you lose some of the, the white because, you know, get yourself a copic opaque white and stick some of the white in later if you lost some of the highlights on the paper. Of course, remember, you do have to do it only after the, paper, the watercolor uh, are dry because if you do it while it's wet, your white will melt and it will not be very nice highlights. It will be kind of the puddle or very messy opaque um, gray if you like very small brushed uh, very small brush that is and I'm loading a lot of little dots of phthalo blue uh, sometimes with a depth of uh, um, the red in it as well to make it a bit of a purple but um, it doesn't really matter the idea is to look at the dark spots the darkest dark and try to mimic that uh, with the paint that you can make. Uh, with such a limited palette, you know, I can't really go very, very dark. I mean, I could somewhat get to a scale of four out of five, but you know, in essence, uh, it's good enough if you can just sort of uh, create a, you know, relatively speaking, darker spot to the adjacent, adjacent shapes, if you like. That's all you're trying to do. Okay, so remember, remember, uh, value still matters, and uh, if you get the value right, your eyes will see the shadows, and your eyes will see uh, the lighted part of the teacup, and they will look uh, nice, right? Contrast, shadow, highlights, all are very, very important concept, uh, which I've covered in detail in other videos. But in any case, uh, there's no harm repeating it here. Okay, uh, and a bit of line, uh, put my name down and I'm going to do a bit of evaluation and see what else I need to do. Uh, I think there's a few more things I could do and uh, then, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Let me use in previous video, uh, it's, you know, actually any white would do. You can use uh, gouache, uh, titanium white, you could use uh, even titanium white. Uh, watercolor and but you use it straight out of the tube you take the tube use a very small brush pick up some of the paint and just slap it on your sketch it doesn't matter the the the, the idea is don't go buy the same thing but if you have a bottle of uh, of copic opaque white perfect if you not just get yourself a titanium white gouache titanium watercolor titanium white doesn't matter uh, the difference is that titanium white is opaque and then you know Chinese or zinc white is transparent so you will not get uh, white like titanium white uh, over here uh, but I do find that the copic opaque white is really really nice and uh, you know I, I do recommend that if you can get a small bottle of it it does help a lot uh, and you know by all means go get it and also get a very very small brush you know the smallest you can find um, they are usually uh, not natural hair they are usually synthetic because it's harder and it's a little bit more uh, controllable so you can lay down the white easily I'm just dancing around you know, uh, where my eye sees the photo with the highlight I'm just gonna put on some of that so I think that's it this is uh, basically the tutorial I wanted to cover and I hope you've uh, enjoyed that and uh, you have also sketch that in the last two weeks I hope you have tried and uh, maybe learn something from this uh, video um, so I really appreciate you guys uh, sticking around in my channel. I hope you will uh, stick around a little bit more. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, uh, stay safe and peace. Uh, right? Bye.